Next, we are honored to have Mr. Frank Elderson, Chairman of the Network for Greening the Financial System, who will be giving us the keynote address virtually. The Network for Greening the Financial System consists of 42 members and is focused on enhancing the financial system to mobilize capital for sustainable development investments. Please enjoy the keynote address. First of all, I want to thank you, uh, Governor uh, Dr. Veritas Antipavop, for inviting me to speak at the Bangkok Sustainable Banking Forum. Um, I have to apologize that I'm not there in person, uh, but um, I would have loved to do that. Uh, but uh, that's the reason why I'm here uh, talking to you virtually uh, from Amsterdam. It's, of course, in terms of CO2 footprint, is, a, um, is, a, uh, is an advantage. I think it is a very good idea that conversations on sustainability are taking place all over the world. And I cannot express how important I think this conference is. The enormous human and financial costs of climate change are having a devastating effect on our collective well-being. In 2017, and I'm just going to give you some figures here, air pollution caused the death of almost 5 million people. In 2018, 62 million people felt the impact of extreme weather events, and over 2 million were displaced. If we look at the widespread effect of these extreme weather events, we cannot deny that they also affect financial stability. Um, of course, we have the examples of extreme weather events, heat waves, the typhoon, Mankut. Um, physical risks or damage from climate events will exert pressure on loan repo repayments and profitability to banks, and especially if these loans are unsecured. To combat this, many governments worldwide are developing new regulations to transition to a low carbon economy. If banks are unprepared for such a shift, they could incur significant losses on their balance sheet from these transition risks. We already see market reactions that could rise in intensity, especially with oncoming regulation in the transition to a low carbon economy. And it's not just about mitigating risks. Think about the opportunities to keep a competitive edge, financial institutions need to adjust their business model on time to reach these opportunities. Think about investments in renewable energy. Uh, we have seen how some countries already have cornered the market in solar panels. Investors are taking more and more sustainability aspects into account and the green bond market is growing. Also, the demand of sustainable products is rising which means that businesses in uh, all over the world, but also, of course, in Southeast Asia, uh, could benefit from producing um, these products in a sustainable way. Discussions on climate-related risks are sweeping the world. I've met with supervisors actually all over the world, uh, in the USA, in Asia, uh, and also within the, uh, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, um, who actually sees the need to act. And we are also seeing that board members at um, um, individual banks and other financial institutions realize these risks and opportunities. And they are undertaking action to combat them together with supervisors. The Bank of Thailand has already made great progress in including ESG, environmental, social and government criteria in their regulations, policy and development process. Uh, your engagement with the Thai Bankers Association on developing a common guideline for sustainable banking is important, is very important to safeguard financial stability of the banking system. The S and the G have garnered a lot of attention in Thailand already. But it is important to also uh, integrate the E, the E of environment, um, to integrate it properly in the discussion that's going on. Ultimately, the climate-related events threaten the stability of both society and governance, and thus the profitability of banks. And I share the Banks of Thailand's view when I say that to do this, the financial sector must also facilitate the transition to a low-carbon economy and take other envirom environmental risks into account. And it needs to start in the boardroom. We are seeing many banks across the world setting off on their sustainability journeys and making this a point of discussion in the boardroom. 
And because it is not a niche or nice to have, it is needed. It is needed for the stability of their businesses. And purely looking at the costs, taking action now will not only lead to lower costs for banks, but also lower risks. Firstly, banks need to adopt robust risk management. And given the rising cost of extreme weather events, banks cannot afford to continue to originate loans and invest using their old risk identification processes. Banks must recalibrate and adapt these risk management processes to properly reflect risks. From a recent DMB study, the financial sector is exposed not only to climate-related risks, but also to other environmental and social challenges, such as water scarcity, diminishing biodiversity, and human rights controversies. Secondly, banks need to understand the implications of new regulation. An example of this is the European Commission's Action Plan on Sustainable Finance. The European Commission is rapidly rolling out an ambitious plan for financing sustainable growth. And this will not only clarify what can be considered as sustainable or green, it will also help to reorient uh, capital flows towards sustainable investment. And this will grow the market for sustainable investment and will lead to new opportunities, but also but also there is a risk of devaluation in products that are not labeled as green. What is the role of central banks and supervisors regarding the greening of the financial system? Um, what are we as central banks and supervisors doing about this? Um, allow me a moment to explain to you about the Central Bank and Supervisors Network for the Greening of the Financial System, the NGFS, which was started in 2017 with eight central banks and supervisors around the world. We all saw the importance of the strengthening of the global response to greening the economy and addressing the uh, related risks. So at the initiative of the Banque de France, we banded together in a network. And our mission is very clear, to exchange experiences, to share best practices and to contribute to the development of environmental and climate risk management in the financial sector. And to mobilize mainstream finance to support the transition towards a sustainable economy. In the last year and a half, the network has grown significantly. From the original eight founding members, today the NGFS brings together 42 central banks and supervisors and eight observers, including the Central Bank of Thailand. Um, and just recently also standard setting bodies such as the Basel Committee for Banking Supervisors uh, and also the, uh, the IAIS. And we are still growing. Uh, now the members already represent five continents, represent half of the global greenhouse gas emissions, and supervise um, three quarters of the global system systemically relevant banks, and two thirds of the global systemically um, important insurers. And all NGFS member central banks and supervisors have declared that climate related risks are a source of financial risk. What do we do as NGFS? We have three work streams, focusing on supervision, macro prudential, and scaling up green finance. And last April, we published uh, four non-binding recommendations for central banks and supervisors. And these recommendations call for integration of climate risks in supervisory activities. And this includes work to fill data gaps and building in-house capacity and knowledge as well as integrating ESG into um, our own management of our own reserves. But with the publication of this report, we are not there yet. Uh, there is still a significant amount of an analytical work to be done in order to equip central banks and supervisors with the appropriate tools and methodologies to identify, quantify, and mitigate climate risks in the financial system. This calls for further technical work to translate the NGFS recommendations or observations into operational policies and processes. And we are already working on that. How the NGFS can contribute to the work of um, board members of banks is of course a relevant question. The work of the NGFS aims to reach beyond our membership and to feed into the sector and existing standard setting bodies. A couple of um, upcoming deliverables and technical documents can contribute to the banking sector's development of its risk management on climate-related risks. Environmental Risk Analysis, ERA, for financial institutions, 
uh, is something we will publish on um, at the end of this year, the beginning of next year. Uh, we are putting together case studies on tools and methodologies used by financial institutions. And they cover a range of environmental, climate-related scenarios, analyses, stress tests, to analyze the impacts of transition and physical risks associated with climate and various environmental factors. Another product that the NGFS is working on is a compilation of high-level scenarios. Um, we will design three to four reference scenarios and produce guidelines on how to use these scenarios. And they will be designed to be useful for supervisors and firms assessing risks to individual institutions. These documents will get banks started on their sustainability journey and help them to understand uh, types of exposures and which scenarios are more relevant to them. The NGFS is a global movement. Combating climate-related risks must be a global movement. And we need sustainable finance to be so mainstream that we don't even need to talk about sustainable finance anymore because all finance needs to be sustainable. We need sophisticated risk management around climate-related risks and where scenario analysis and stress testing of these risks is a regular occurrence. We need the board and senior management of institutions to begin initiating and engaging in, uh, in managing these risks. And this is not about doing good, but about protecting business and financial stability for business of banks in the future and for future generations. And I am thrilled that the Bank of Thailand is underlining the importance of this in your conference. Um, and I'll have an Oliang, um, which is uh, for the non-Thai among you, um, an, an iced tea here in Thailand, uh, later today to think about your conference um, and um, to be there with you and uh, not just virtually. Uh, because as I said in the beginning, I'm very sorry that I cannot make it um, um, in person. I wish all of you a very lively discussion. And I wish all of you a very good um, and um, stimulating conference. Because I'm convinced that if all the people that are together there in that room, for me so far away, but for all of you there together, that if you think about what needs to be done in this world, if you think about um, what your responsibilities are, in, be it as a banker, be it as a central banker, be it as a supervisor, we all have to make this change. We all need to adapt to climate change. We all need to adapt our business models. We need to adapt the way we work. We need to adapt the way we supervise. I wish you wisdom um, and I wish you a very fruitful conference. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the virtual keynote address. Let us now move on to our first panel discussion.